Bye. Thanks for checking out the Magitan Extended Glockenspiel. In this video I wanted to take you through the different sounds available in the performance options. So we'll start with the sound that's labelled hard, which is a hard mallet. If we go into that menu, we've got options of different microphones, from contact mics, to diamond mics, to tube condenser microphones. We've got the option of changing the pitch, envelope options as well, alongside high pass and low pass filters. And this is the same on each of the performance options. In the looped options, like tape and stretch, which we'll come on to, we have the option to change the speed of those. We'll have a little look at those later. For the time being, let's go back to the main menu. So, we've got hard, mallet, traditional glockenspiel sound. If I move over to soft, that's the glockenspiel played. with a vibraphone mallet. It's played very softly, but you can hear in some of the hits on the higher velocities, the kind of frame of the glockenspiel. Which gives a kind of lovely performance texture, I think. And then we've got magnet. So this came from an instrument in the 1970s called a Deegan Electra Vibe. Um, I've been fascinated by this instrument for years. I've never seen one, but it's essentially kind of a vibraphone version of a Fender Rhodes. And as I was sort of preparing this instrument and playing around with ideas, I thought, well, the bars on the glockenspiel are steel, steel is magnetic, what would happen if I used a guitar pickup? So I wired a single coil guitar pickup onto a jack lead and I did some experiments. So I found that using the hard mallet with the magnetic pickup was, it was too much transient for the pickup to take. I don't know if that's different with different pickups. This is all I've experimented with so far. But with the soft mallet, you've got this kind of like roads like tone. And this particular tone was really the reason why I decided to extend the range of the instrument. So the glockenspiel itself that I sampled is only an octave and a half. So I extended it down to C0 uh, and I pitched the notes up to complete the octave. So if we move on from there, another thing that I've really enjoyed doing is experimenting with what I play instruments with. So this one I had the idea of using ping pong balls. And so ping is a ping pong ball on a chopstick played like a mallet. So you get just single kind of hits. And pong is the ping pong ball dropped onto the keys. Now this is a part of why I really love sampling because there isn't, well, I'm not gonna say no way you could play this, but you'd have to be very good at juggling. And I am, I don't have that kind of dexterity. So I was kind of thinking with that, it's almost like a, a metal marxophone or like a keyed marxophone. Then we come on to the sustained st sounds.
I love the kind of resininess of the the bow on the on the bar. I think it sounds really cool. If we go to tape, so this is the Fisher Price cassette recorder. You should be able to see it behind my head. It has a little microphone in it. I then, because it's got a little speaker in, I recorded it back into the computer using a stereo room mic and moving the uh, cassette recorder around the microphone. So we've actually got two options here. So this first one, three ips, is the tape being moved around. Moved around the stereo rubber mic. So you can kind of hear like the stereo field of it, of it moving. There's a sense of movement there. Also with the speed. It's almost like a poor man's uh, rotary speaker. Rotary microphone? I don't know. Anyway, I then took this signal and recorded it back on to the uh, cassette recorder. So it's much more degraded. I love those high frequency notes that just kind of seem to fall apart. And the last sound that we've got is stretch. which is a kind of granular uh, time stretch. And it gives this wonderful digital quality to the glockenspiel. And if we mix in some of the other tones, and maybe go into the menu, we can change the pitch. Maybe let's change the release. Maybe let's bring in some of that magnet. So my intention with this instrument was to kind of create almost like a, a synth but with acoustic sound sources in, in place of the waveforms. So you've got all the things that you would, may associate with synths from filters, the ADSR envelope, the ability to change the pitch of the, the waveform or the, the sound source. And then you're mixing and matching to form the sound together. That was my kind of thinking. I've also added some effects onto the instrument. So we have a high and low pass filter uh, globally, as well as individually on all of the channels. Uh, a delay, which... The next effect we've got is called rain. So this is a convolution based effect. Um, I became really interested in using convolutions as kind of sort of chance loopers in a way of recording things in and just sort of seeing what happens. 
So it was a recording of rain that I took over there um, because when it rains in here, it sort of blows against the window and you get this very sort of percussive um, pitter patter sound. And I thought it was really cool. So I, I recorded it and um, got about a minute and a half of it. So in the convolution, it sort of carries whatever you record into it like a kind of kind of loop pedal. So almost like kind of frippertronics or, or kind of, you know, unpredictable loops. I really love those for kind of providing beds under tracks. It's not going to be useful in every circumstance, of course, but I thought it might be a useful texture. Um, we then go into distortion and because I've made this so it goes in series, you can start affecting that loop. And likewise with the lo-fi, So if we bring up some So to keep it kind of uh, using the effects that you might use with the Glockenspiel, I've included just a normal reverb alongside the other convolutions. This is a, a convolution of an AKG BX20 spring reverb. Thanks for checking out this demo of the Magitone Extended Glockenspiel instrument. It's available now from magitone.com for the full version of Contact.